Uh, welcome everybody to the December 8th Hyperledger Technical Oversight Committee call. As uh, everyone who's on this call is aware, two things that we must abide by. The first is the antitrust policy notice that is currently displayed on the screen. And the second is our code of conduct, which is linked in the agenda. All right, so for our agenda today, we have the standard announcement. Uh, the Dev Weekly Developer Newsletter goes out each Friday. If you would like to include anything in that newsletter, please leave a comment uh, for consideration at the link that is in the agenda. Um, as far as meetings for the holidays, uh, I thought we should probably cancel the 22nd, the 29th, and the 5th uh, to make sure that everybody who is on holiday uh, can enjoy those holidays and not have to worry about the technical oversight committee call. Um, I'm not sure whether we'll have content for next week and we'll decide that next week as to whether or not we have one next week, but uh, definitely for the, the holidays, I'd, I'd like to make sure that we cancel those meetings. Any other announcements that anybody on the call has? Arun? Yes. Um, so this is regarding Hyperledger Blockchain Explorer project, which was recently deprecated or end of life cycle, I guess. And um, there has been interest in multiple, among multiple community members. So it's going to be um, like people are looking into adding certain features to that project and seeing in further improving the project and bringing it back to life. So there is going to be a discussion tomorrow 8 a.m. Eastern time. And the calendar link is where exactly for people who might be interested in joining that? Right. I need to work with David in getting it up on the calendar link. Okay. I'll, I'll work with David. Yeah. Okay. And then, yeah. Um, I think if I understand correctly that uh, the code base has been moved to the labs area. So it's currently uh, a lab and not a project. Um, and if that would like to come back to be a top level project at some point in the future, it will have to go through the project proposal process. Great. Yep. Okay, great. So if you know of anybody else who is interested in the project, please bring them to the call tomorrow. All right, thanks, Arun. Any other announcements that anybody would like to make? All right, I don't see any hands. Um, nobody coming off mute, so I'll take that as a no. Uh, as far as quarterly reports, uh, we did have the Cello report come in uh, this week. I uh, did not see. Um, any comments on that? I'm just opening it now just to make sure that uh, nothing new has come in overnight that I may have missed. Um, no, it looks like the only uh, comment here is from, from David Boswell um, about social media posts and um, marketing for the 1.0 release that's coming out. Looks like we still do have a number of uh, TOC members that have yet to review the document. So we'll um, you know, look to see if there's anything that comes out there. Any questions, though, that anybody does have uh, from that particular project report, the Cello project report? Hey, Tracy, I, I did have a question on the documentation, the lack thereof. Um, it was the same comment uh, from their last report. Uh, I still didn't see much uh, update in that in that area. So I just putting another comment in there. Okay, and it's that uh, there needs to be more documentation uh, for the Cello project. Do you think before the the window release is what you're asking for? Yeah, yeah. What, what's in there is completely lacking. If I'm a newcomer trying to pick up Cello, I just can't figure out anything. Okay. Bobby, have you, um, in the learning materials working group, has anybody been working with the Cello folks on 
any sort of documentation or anything there? Uh, has that come up or not? Um, no, it hasn't. But David and I had a meeting this week about how we're going to change learning materials working group to help uh, support that more with uh, task force. And one of them will be that documentation task force. Okay. All right. Thanks, Bobby. Didn't mean to put you on the spot there, but I, I know you had helped some it other um, <laughs> projects in the past, and I didn't know if this one was uh, one that had come up or not. No, but that documentation working group was um, going to support all of those efforts to make it simple and work together with us to help them uh, attain the documentation they need to get newcomers onboarding easily. Okay. Um, and Jim, when we get there, this might be a, um, a best practice that we want to add to the checklist. Um, as we are thinking about documentation. Yeah, it, it was kind of my, my, my subtle way to say, they need to really drastically improve documentation to declare 1.0. Yeah, okay. I'll reach out uh, to folks this week and set something up to get started. Yeah, I appreciate it, Bobby. That's great, thanks, Bobby. All right, any other comments about Cello at this point? All right, I will note that uh, Firefly also did come in uh, early this week. So I did include the link there on the agenda. We'll definitely include, include it next time uh, as well. But uh, just FYI, that one did come in. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to look at it yet, uh, please do so. Um, and I guess I can ask uh, the question because uh, it does look like a, a good number of people have already taken a look at that. Are there any comments or questions about the Firefly report at this point? All right, resounding no. All right, so, um, so last week we had talked about uh, a couple of things. One, we had talked about the different task forces and, and closing those out. Uh, and one of the items that came up when we were talking about the project health task force was potentially creating a checklist where we would move some of the questions that we have in the project reports to uh, some sort of spreadsheet and maybe try to include some of the project health um, type things into this particular um, sort of checklist of yes, no, do we have these things uh, that are included? Uh, I started this with the list of the things that we have done in the past um, in the past year, right? We've created the common repository structure, we've created the maintainer guidelines, and we've uh, approved the inclusive naming proposal. And so I basically included all of the items from the, there, whether or not they were a must or a should, um, they are included here. Uh, for most of these, I uh, specified whether they were required or recommended, um, but not all of them. Uh, maybe I need to go back and do that for the ones I missed uh, there. But uh, you know, these these items, none of them should surprise us as we have uh, approved these things in the past. Um, but I did want to have a discussion and see if there were other things that we should be adding to this list. Uh, I'm happy to, you know, take those notes and, and start to add them here uh, directly in the document. Any thoughts, things that we should add to this list? I don't have things to add, but I'll just say I like it. All right. A, Thanks, a, Dave. A all in one location is very convenient, and I wish this had existed previously. So um, it looks like it's pretty inclusive of the things we already have. I can't think of anything new, but I think this would be a good thing going forward, and we'll add to it as we think of things. Yeah. Um, and uh, Dave and others, the, what I was thinking here is that we would probably create uh, a separate tab for each of the projects uh, that would be a copy of this template, 
right? And uh, as we, as and when we add things to the template, we would also add them to the individual project tabs. Uh, so that again, one place to go to, to see, you know, uh, do our projects support the best practices? If so, where can you find that? Um, so that it's, it's also somewhat of a, um, appendix or an index, I guess is the right way to say that, right? That, that basically allows people to quickly find the information so that if they're interested in say, becoming a maintainer of one of the projects, they can go find out wh how, what does that take? And how do I, how do I become a maintainer? What are the steps I have to go through? Um, so yeah, I think that's um, kind of the idea here. Peter? Uh, quick suggestion. And I'm having to make a change to it will be okay if I move the required slash optional information into its own column so that it's filterable by it. Uh sure. Yeah, we could definitely do that. Okay. And then once I do that, I'll have a few ideas for optional stuff, but nothing to add on the required front. Okay. Um Kamlesh? So I think maybe uh, information about the LTS releases could be added. And other thing like even a couple of open source projects I have seen. Uh, so even they also have the information about the uh, kind of the project implementation, like suppose the real time or maybe production implementation of the particular open source project. So do you have a list of well, yeah. so production list uses? Example, yeah, yeah. So so like for example, suppose if you see any for example, suppose if you go to any open source projects, they mention about like who are using this particular project. Could be could be added. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um Sean, if you scroll down, uh, I am editing as we speak. Uh, so yeah, at the bottom, I added this question. Do you have a list of production uses um, to the the um, document, Kamlesh? I also added your LTS release um, piece as well on line 25. All right, Arno? Yes, hi. I mean, I second what's been said before. This would be great to have for sure. Uh, it feels like I wish you could populate some of this automatically, but uh, my question really is, how do you deal with the fact that many projects, if not all, have multiple repositories? Are we That's... going to just focus on the main one or? <laughs> <laughs> Good question, Arno. Uh, I have that same question um, in my head and I don't know a good answer to that. I really appreciate thoughts here, right? Um, I. I mean, in my mind, there's two ways that come to my mind of how we can deal with this. One is that uh, we have a separate tab for each repo. Uh, I think this is gonna make this a very long spreadsheet and uh, that, that may be too overwhelming for people. Um, maybe I have a third way. We could create a separate one for each project and then have repo um, specific questions and project specific questions, right? Uh, we could, uh, the, the third option, which was my original second option was we do it per project. And in the location column, we have multiple locations, one for each repo. Um, so yeah, I think those are the three that come to mind, but I'm like, would love to hear your thoughts on what you think is best. And um, if there's a fourth or fifth option that might be better. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I don't claim to have the right <laughs> answer either. That's why I brought it up. It, can, it crossed my mind. I think, you know, practically speaking, at least as a first step, focusing on the main repository seems like a reasonable thing to do. I think otherwise it's going to become very quickly overwhelming and yeah. very hard to manage. I think it's better to have less information that, that we can keep, you know, accurate, keep it up to date, then trying to encompass everything. And then, you know, it's going to become obsolete before you know, and then it defeats the whole purpose. 
Maybe yeah, makes we sense. Just need to have a note in how people use this so they're aware, and uh, maybe maybe there's something that needs to be done at the project level so that you know. I see. I see, I'm thinking out loud, so I apologize <laughs> if I'm <laughs> rambling. But you know, I wonder if it's up to the project to point to the other repos and then provide additional information. And to some degree, you can figure this out by just the name. Usually, you can find that out. Maybe more can be done in that area at the project level. Yeah, and and. Arno, because you've said that, I guess a fourth option that has just now come to mind is what if we required this in the README um, for each of the repos? Or a pointer to this from the README um, where basically the information existed as an index to the project so that people knew where to find things within that particular repo. Uh, okay, Arun. Hey, thanks, Tracy. So I was looking through this list, and thanks for aggregating it in one place. I am, I like it to be in one place. Now that I see this list, um, so thinking of some of the bigger projects or some of the projects that have wider scope, it it could be as simple as, for instance, let's say Fabric Samples, for instance, um, a, a repository that may get contributions from multiple folks in each interested in some aspect of it some few folks interested in on the um, let's say bringing up of a test net whereas few of them could be interested in writing samples on the chain code different languages uh, having um i know like fabric team is doing a good job but maybe we can recommend uh, another file called something like owners which the chromium like defined earlier which allows us to define a folder level ownership, right? We can say that there can be reviewers and reviewers can who specializes on that particular field or that either it could be that part of, of I mean, that folder of a project or in that part of a project. And then approvers only when they approve it goes into the main uh, base. Yep. Um, and that would be an owner's file would be recommended, I think, right? Right. It's not a mandate, um, but it's yeah, recommended. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Kamlesh. So I think uh, like uh, Anna just point right, like there are multiple projects and sub projects. So maybe we can also have a, having a list of sub projects, so it will easily identifiable to the people like which project related to which particular repos. So, so for example, suppose the fabric having a multiple sub project could be included in the in the repository. Okay. Uh Nathan. Um on this sheet, it seems like it's important for us to, to to call out that most of these are required on a per repo basis. Even if you try to save energy, you still have to have something there for either a legal compliance reason or because if it's not there, you're probably not doing the activity it in, indicates like doing the testing or um, uh, implementing the conventions. And so, you know, one of the hopes is that as we get our linting, linting tool um, kept up to speed, is that it's very easy for us to, to run this against the repositories and get a picture overall of where the project is at um, because there, there, there is going to be a constant struggle to keep some of these things up to date. And one of the things that's important when a project decides to make lots of sub repositories is that they understand up front what they're signing up for. Because um, I think one of the things that happens is often the sub project is kind of a matter of maintainer convenience or it's a matter of, you know, it, it's just more easier to use the, pro, the programming language tools if I don't have to worry about more than one programming language in the same repo. Um, and they don't realize all of these things um, end up duplicated as a result. Um, 
I agree. I'm not sure uh, what specific change, if any, we need to make to this uh, to reflect that, Nathan. I just wondered if in required and recommended, if there's something we can call out about whether they can link or whether they have to duplicate the content. A couple of these, we could probably just link from one to the other. And I know we've had that debate ad nauseum in the repository structure and the maintainer guidelines. So it may be that just the content that's in that linked document is enough. Yeah, uh, completely understood. I think um, if I remember correctly, and we'd have to open it, um, but I think in the, uh, let me see if I can open it here and just take a look at it. Um, <laughs> I think in the maintainer's guidelines, uh, we have, was it the maintainer's guidelines? No, it was the common repository structure. In the common repository structure, we do have a comment. I remember about these files must contain specific comment, uh, specific content. Uh, so I think the license, the code of conduct, and the security are the three that we list as must require uh, specific con content. Um, is that is that what we should be marking then? Is those three as these require specific content, um, and then the other files are the variable content ones? Yeah, I just wondered if where we say oh, you know, file required, um, we we could put a note in this in this list. It's just it's really nice as a maintainer to have something like this spreadsheet where I can just go, just go through and make sure each thing is, is ready to go because it makes the pull requests a lot easier to follow if I can get them all through at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Um, it is the uh, security, I just said, I'm, <laughs> I don't know, my brain obviously is not awake yet this morning. Security license and code of conduct that are the uh, the ones that are special. Um, maybe maybe the reason that my brain is not able to keep those in my head is because okay, security and license. Where's the code of conduct? Here we go. Um, so these three are the ones that are special, if you will. I'm just gonna mark them, highlight them in some way, so we remember that we need to do something special with these. Okay. Uh, thank you, Nathan, for that. I will um, make sure to do that. Any other comments? Uh, anything else we should add? Um, Jim, I feel like what I want to add uh, around documentation is uh, something like, do you have tutorials on use? Uh, to reflect kind of the comment you made about the cello one. Are there other sorts of documentation that people think is extremely important to make sure that uh, that exists for our projects? Yeah, I'm kind of torn a little bit here. I feel like a, a active project will naturally have good documentation because that's the only way to get the community to be able to pick it up and use it. Um, um, if, a doc, if a project is lacking basic documentation, it's a sign that nobody cares about it. Um, <laughs> so that's, that's kind of what's in my head. So maybe we can say uh, best practices is, is having good documentation, but really, if you don't have that, how can you be um, the effective project? Yeah, so I add it. Um, okay, I obviously have no idea how to use sheets. Um, I added, do you have documentation as one, right? It's very possible that some of our projects that are in incubation haven't gotten to their documentation yet. And so that will end up being a no. Um, and then I added the second question of uh, tutorials on use. Um, I, I want to, I want to avoid the use of the word good uh, because it's very subjective what good means. Uh, and I'd like to be more specific if we could, if, if there's other things that we think are necessary in the documentation um, that would make it good in our mind, um, right? Um, what, what does that really mean to us? So Arun? 
um yeah maybe i'm overlooking it um but i feel like as a developer when i first time see any of the code bases and like unless i know the code base i may be interested in knowing how to build it locally uh, how to test set up my test environment so i know there is a testing code point which is put as recommended and i'm just not sure if it considers the build and test if that's what it meant to be is that in the row number 19th yeah no uh uh that is truly testing code so i added uh, lines 31 and 32 here um do you have build instructions probably in your documentation um and then the second one do you have documentation to help a contributor understand the code base i think that's what you're asking for is it arun sure um maybe not the code base um at least the build instructions if possible because there could be let's say some of the some of the projects could be using make files some of them could be using a rest base is once and they could have multiple flags in there and as a first time contributor i may understand how the programming language works but i may not be able to comprehend the the uh, multiple options which are provided in in those files unless i know about the project right so maybe there should be an option so if you are a developer and if you are building uh, and if you are contributing and here is how you can build locally it allows you us to gain confidence that you have tested and it gives you confidence that you are able to build it yep yep okay bobby so with the documentation task force, our goal, and hopefully we'll be finished by the end of the year, is to get some recommendations for projects in incubation to take their GitHub repositories and put them through uh, these templates and have user docs. And again, I completely agree with everyone who said that the documentation is a direct reflect on how the project is loved. <laughs> so depending on how much work went into describing steps in the GitHub is is as good as your documentation. When you say, um, the only thing that, that I have a question on is when you say um, you're more talking about how-to tutorials, um, I'm not sure how you could get the community all to do that in a uniform way, unless you supply a template that each project has to do for that specific reason. Yeah, I, I think that tutorials are gonna be very dependent on uh, the project at hand, right? I think it's important to have those tutorials, but I don't think it's uh, necessary to reflect what type of tutorials, if you will. Okay, other thoughts? Arun? Yeah, um, I know I'm not supposed to use the chat here, but I um, I could, I just wanted to paste the link. So this is some kind of documentation that I was talking about. Um, personally, this benefited me when, I mean, long back when I started contributing to this project. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts, anything else we should add to this? Peter, the uh, the column you requested, the required recommended, is this kind of the idea that you had there? 
Yeah, that works. <laughs> that worked. It implies you had something else in mind. <laughs> <laughs> My first idea would have been slightly different, but right. uh, this is perfect. It, it serves the purpose. It's uh, It makes the data structural just the same way. Okay. So it wasn't it wasn't a jab. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks, Peter. No problem. All right. So I'll clean this up a bit. Um, I think you know some of these other things that we had uh, that aren't marked yet as required or recommended. Uh, I'll check the whatever we documented when we document it. Say the maintainers guidelines or the um common repository structure and uh, make sure that they uh, have whether or not it's a required or recommended some of these new things that we just added i'm i'm guessing these are all recommended um, practices since we just kind of added them uh, they weren't things that we thought were necessarily required but happy to to be told that you think something should be required if uh if it should be Okay, so for the moment, I'll make them all recommend it. Um, and then if for some reason, at some point in the future, we decide that they should be required, we can have that discussion. Um, any other thoughts on this before we close this topic? Just that I think it's a great idea. Generic thumbs up plus one. All right. Thanks, Peter. So maybe you said it before and I missed it. So what's the plan now? I mean, what's, <laughs> how do you go at filling out all this data? Yeah, so um, I don't know. I thought I could maybe potentially take a first stab at this by going through uh, for the different projects and uh, marking whether or not they exist and where I found them. Uh, and then anything that's left blank, turn that over to the um the projects to allow them to update it uh, or change it as the case may be if uh if i got it wrong for some reason um does that sound like a an appropriate next step well if you're willing to do the work i don't think anybody's going to object but i think it's a bit unfair i don't know why you would have to carry the load here we have people from different projects even within the tsc loan I think it should be spread around so that at least one per project, one person per project volunteers to do it for their own project. And then there may be some that for which we don't have anybody. Maybe you can. Yeah, either, either slide, that would but. that would work, or we could just say for the next quarter reports, please fill out the initial spreadsheet as oh, well. That's an interesting idea. Um, I'm happy to do either way. If somebody wants to volunteer to fill it out now, that's great. Um, I'm not going to force anybody to do that, but I, I do think, yeah, definitely. I want, uh, in the next quarterly report, if it hasn't been filled out or it's partially filled out for the, the projects to complete that. Tracy, I'll volunteer to do, to do fabrics. All right, thanks, Dave. First, first here. Yeah, so we have a precedent. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna change that link that I have right now. It's comment only. I'm gonna change it to uh, editor, um, so that anybody can go ahead and edit the the document going forward. Uh, so Tracy, <clears throat> we'll have um this as ongoing or just one time uh capture um it, assuming some projects may not have all of them checked do we want them to progress so eventually they have all of them checked i, I think that would be ideal jim right as that we do get to a place where they are all checked um i think it 
the the more that people uh, and projects have, let's say, the, the more that projects have checked these, I think the the more advanced they are. Um, I think there's, you know, potentially a question of, uh, and this was not something I did, but maybe we also want to look at the incubate incubation exit criteria and see if there's any other things here that um, might be good questions to include. Um, that would also tell us for the projects that are currently being incubated, whether or not it uh, is getting close to, to being uh, something that they would request to go active. Um, so yeah, I don't think this is a one-time thing. I think, you know, the, the problem that we have is that once people fill it out, they think they're done. Um, but things change in the projects, right? New repos are added, um, you know, uh, people, you know, um, may may do things differently in the code, right? They they may have changed some stuff. Some of these will definitely feel like they're static, but uh, I think there is the, the need for us to, you know, look at this every so often and make sure that things are up to date. Yeah, that's how I'm thinking about it as well. So given that, it's probably a good idea just to tie this up uh, with the uh, quarterly report. Um, either expand this, uh, the section where we do the, the, the yes and no um, uh, checklist uh, or link link to this from that section. And we yeah. probably also uh, clarify what does require mean? Uh, what does not doing the require uh, entail? Would that just prevent me from uh, graduating or there's other other consequences? <laughs> I, yeah, I think, um, so two things, Jim. One, on the project reports, what I thought I'd do is replace the current section that we have that ask yeah. the yes, no questions and just replace it with a, a pointer to this document um, mm -hmm. so that people um, can check their project and make sure that it's up to date, right? Um, and then related to whether or not a project has not completed a required step, I think that is the time at which we um, become a bit noisy right, with them as the TOC and we, we say, when are you gonna do this? I know I've seen that a lot in the project reports in the past, right? Where um, where it's been the case that a particular project hasn't uh, completed something uh, maybe in the inclusive language statement or something. And, and, and usually a question comes out right, in that project report, when are you going to do it? Or why haven't you done this? And um, I think that's the, still the appropriate type of steps for us to be taking. Yeah, cool. Sounds good. All right. Um, any other volunteers for anybody who would like to uh, volunteer for any of the projects? Yeah, I'll, I'll do the far flat one. Okay, far thanks, Jim. <laughs> All right, any other volunteers? Anybody want to take on any of the other projects? I could do cacti and bevel. And bevel, okay. Thanks, Peter. No problem. Anyone else? No. Okay. Um, great. So uh, the doc, the the link is now editable. So uh, if you do open it again, uh, you should be able to see that you can edit it. I have nothing else on the agenda for today. Does anybody else have anything they would like to bring up? In terms of logistics, what was the idea to create a tab for each project? Yes. Or a column? A, a tab. tab. Yeah. Okay. 
which is just basically a copy of the template. All right, any other uh, topics for discussion today? No? Okay. Uh, well, then I appreciate that. Um, I maybe just one comment before I let you guys go. I know you guys were all excited, ready to hit that leave button. Um, <laughs> The the TOC, uh, I think we said this last time, but the TOC election is currently in the hands of the governing board. Uh, so we're expecting results back from that uh, in a week, uh, probably early next week, I think is, is the timeline for that. So uh, we'll let people know once those results are final, uh, as far as the, the new TOC that's coming in. Uh, one of the things I was thinking we might do for a TOC call next week is uh, if we do have the results, potentially we'll get some of the new joiners to come in and we could potentially have a discussion on, um, you know, a transition type discussion where the people who are leaving the, the TOC uh, would, you know, provide some thoughts and insights into things that they've done and I would like to you know, see maybe being continued in the next year and then maybe get some input from the new TLC members as far as uh, what it is that they'd like to accomplish in the next year. So um, all up for uh, when, when the final results actually come in, if it shows up in time or not, but uh, that's, that's kind of the current thinking and kind of what's happening with the TOC election. All right, uh, so that's all I have. Uh, Jim, uh, you did come off mute. Did you have a question? No, I was ready to say thanks, JC. <laughs> all right, great. Um, yeah, so that's it. I will let you guys actually hit the leave button now. So thanks again for uh, your thoughts and your discussion today. Yeah, thanks, JC. Thank thanks, bye. Tracy, bye, everybody.